The Daughters of St. Paul, in collaboration with the Archdiocese of Palo, presents Sunday Gospel Reflections. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord My dear brothers and sisters, today's Gospel passage recounts that on the first day of the week, on the Easter Sunday, Jesus appears to his disciples bearing three gifts. The gift of peace, the gift of joy, and the gift of the apostolic mission. We can imagine the scene, and guided by the gospel that we have just heard, reflect on these three points. The gift of peace. The first words of Jesus when he appeared to his disciples are, Peace be with you. Jesus brings authentic peace because through his sacrifice on the cross, Jesus achieved reconciliation between God and humanity. He conquers sin and its consequence, death. The disciples needed peace. They needed reconciliation with Jesus because when Jesus was condemned to death, they fell into dismay, they were shocked, and because of fear, they left the Lord. Now in this Easter Sunday, our Lord's resurrection, Christ appears to them in their midst alive, and Jesus brings them peace, authentic peace, which is reconciliation. In fact, it is also during this time John 20, 21, in this scene that Jesus institutes the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. 
We all know no, through our experience that the first fruit of a good confession is peace because we are being reconciled with God, with our brothers and sisters, and with ourselves. And yet, when Jesus appeared, we know that Thomas was not there. He was absent. And even if the, the disciples were telling him that they saw the Lord, Jesus, uh, Thomas was still incredulous. He wanted to verify uh, personally you know, what, they, what they assert as true, what they believe. So Jesus, in the second Sunday of Easter, which is like today, you know, Jesus appeared again to them in their midst, even if the doors were locked. And this time he confronts Thomas's disbelief. And he, he asks him to touch his hands and to put his Thomas's, Thomas's hand in our Lord's side. And Thomas believed. He said, my Lord and my God, the prayer which we say every time there is consecration in the Holy Eucharist. Therefore, the wounds of Christ were the ones that gave Thomas peace. The wounds of Christ, therefore, are signs of his infinite love and mercy. It is important, therefore, that we meditate on, on our Lord's wounds, the proof of his mercy and love. That is why this Sunday is called Sunday of Mercy. It is also beautiful to, to imagine that Jesus in heaven, he presents his wounds to, to God the Father and tells him, this is the price of that I paid for my brothers and sisters. And Jesus continues to intercede for us before the Father. All of us, each one of us, is in need of God's mercy. Peace, therefore, is the first gift. The second gift is joy. That's the gift that the reason Jesus brings to his disciples. In the Gospel of St. John, we, he, he tells us that when the disciples saw Jesus, they rejoiced. They rejoiced when they saw the Lord. They were glad. In the version of St. Luke, the same story, second Sunday of Easter, St. Luke says in his version of this Gospel that the disciples disbelieved for joy. They disbelieved for joy. We too perhaps uh, have this experience uh, when there is a very beautiful thing, uh, an extraordinary thing that, that happens. Sometimes we say, this is too good to be true. I can't believe it. Or more or less, it's hard for me to believe. And yet it's true. So, uh, the disciples were in this same situation. We can, we understand them. And uh, they disbelieved for joy. This is the joy that Jesus brings us. If we grow, if we draw close to him, if we draw near to him, Jesus also will give us this joy. The joy of Easter. The joy of Easter. Not just any kind of joy, but the joy of Easter. As one theologian says, we are Easter people. Thus we are, we have this joy of Easter. The third gift. In addition to peace and joy, Jesus also brings the gift of the apostolic mission to his disciples. Jesus said, he says to them, as the Father has sent me, even so, I send you. My dear brothers and sisters, when we were baptized, we too became Jesus' disciples. Thus, we too received this apostolic mission, the commissioning, as the Father has sent me, even so, I send you. It's very beautiful. 
So Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of a new dynamism of love which is capable of transforming the world in the presence, no? with the presence of the Holy Spirit, starting with our families, with our communities, with our circles of friends. Let us thank the Lord for this gift. And uh, let us, let this second Sunday of Easter, uh, let us allow ourselves to approach Christ uh, with faith, opening our hearts to peace, joy, and mission. Bearing in mind that God's infinite mercy, that from this comes, come this gift, the gift of peace, joy, and the strength for the mission, the strength, the inspiration to continue with our mission with joy. Let us entrust this Easter prayer to the maternal intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. O risen Christ, we thank and praise you for the sacrifice you have made for love of us. As you come and show your wounded hands for our eyes of faith to see, May we use our hands to give love and care to those in need. In the breaking of bread, in hands folded in prayer, in healing hands of surgeons, nurses, and caregivers, may we all be concrete living examples of your divine mercy. We ask this through Mary, our merciful Mother. Amen.